Uh, welcome to Event of Tips and Tricks Tutorials! Oh my god, I'm doing this video again. I've already done it and it was 20 minutes long. <laughs> I'm not going to subject anybody to 20 minutes of work planes. That's a bit harsh. So I'm going to try and condense this and make it no more than 10 minutes. If you're looking at the video time and it's longer than 10 minutes, I do apologize. I just I talk too much. I'm doing it right now. Anyway, work planes. What is a work plane? A work plane is a means to create sketches and make new features in your model. So when you've started up Inventor and you've got you know, a part or an assembly open, you've got a work features area in your ribbon bar here, which has got planes, axes, and points. These are your work features. And we're not looking at points and axes, we're just looking at planes. So when I was, a, I used to be an Autodesk instructor, so doing, you know, eight Autodesk training centers, training courses. And I used to always explain planes to people as bits of paper, right? You need to make a sketch. You need to sketch a shape within your part and there's nothing to sketch on, right? So you say you want to create a cut through this this plate, but you don't want to sketch on the face. You want to sketch slightly offset from it. You need a physical face to sketch on, and that face is the plane. And in terms of placing your sketch in the inventor part, think of the work plane as like a bit of paper. You're always going to be sketching on a flat face, a flat plane, and it's going to be like a paper thing. So. Think of work planes as pieces of paper, and you need to put these bits of paper inside the inventor space. And that's the best way to think about them, because when you're placing work planes in funny positions, it's always best to think about it as like a flat bit of card or a bit of paper that you're putting down to sketch on. So that's what a, that's what a work plane is in essence. And primarily they are used to create sketches, to facilitate new sketches, or to you know represent center lines for creating a mirror something like that. So there's loads of different ways of, uh, of creating them and there's loads of different purposes, I guess, for work planes. So straight out the box, when you start in your part, you're given an origin folder. You've got YZ plane, XZ plane, and XY plane. They, they are work planes. They're standard work planes that you can't change. You can't do anything with them. So you would typically, you t not always, but typically you would use these to start a new part. You would sketch on like the XY plane and then you would create a sketch, create a profile, extrude up, and then start modifying it from there. But we'll get to a point, there'll be a point very soon afterwards where you need to create a sketch and you can't use these three standard work planes. And you might not be able to use the faces of the geometry that you've created so far. And that's when you start to need to use work planes. So in the interest of trying to keep this as quick as possible, I'm not gonna go through every single method of creating a work plane. But what I will say with a huge degree of confidence and controversy, is don't use these. These are relatively new in Inventor, and they're, they're there to assist beginners. But I'm a beginner. Well, yeah, you are. But but these options here, right? what they do is they will restrict what you can click based on which one you select. So if this one here, for example, three points, this allows you to create a work plane intersected between three points. But what it does is when you select this, it stops you picking anything other than points, which is great. That is great. But when you're a beginner, you might not know that you might not know what you need to click. You know where you want your plane to be. You know where you want your sketch to be, but you don't know what you need to click to get it there. So if you've selected this one, then you might have selected wrong and you've stopped any chance of being able to select the right way because your cursor is still stuck to just picking points. So it's great if you know for sure, for 100% that that's where you want the work plane to go. But if you're just a beginner and you're just getting your head around it and you're playing around, try to not use these. They'll just cock block you. They'll cock block you into not being able to pick the right thing. So what I would suggest you do, and this is what I use all the time. I'm old school. I learned, I, I was, I learned all this sort of stuff before any of these buttons existed. So I'm trained to use this thing here. So if you just use the plane button, this lets you pick anything in the model, absolutely anything, faces, edges, and points. And it will create a work plane based on whatever it is you click. So like I said, there are a number of different ways of making work planes. And I'll go through the most common ones. So one of the most common ones is just to select a flat face, hold down the left mouse button, and then pull away. And then that will offset a work plane from that face by a set distance. So if you type in 50 mil here, and then click OK, that creates a work plane 50 mil away from that face and it's adaptive. So if that face moves, then the work plane will move with it and you can then sketch on that plane like that. And then that's your bit of paper in space for ready for you to sketch on. 
Right, for that particular method, there's probably somebody out there ready to jump in the comments. You did it very slowly. That was a really unproductive way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? So what that particular method that I've just shown you, if you were to create a new sketch and then do exactly the same thing, hold down the left mouse button and then pull away and then say 50 mil and then OK, that does like a two-in-one type thing. That'll create the work plane and the sketch at the same time. So that's a little bit better, I guess, for that particular method of creating a work plane. All right, so once you've made a work plane, um, there it is in space. If you want to get rid of it, you can write... If you want to interact with a work plane, by the way, you've got to hover over the edge, right? You can't you can't interact with a work plane in the middle. You've got to hover over the edge, right-click, and then if you want to, you can delete that work plane. Um, when you delete a work plane, normally there are things associated with the work plane, like sketches, and then there's features associated with that sketch, which is associated with the work plane. So it's giving you the option here to delete everything that goes along with it. So that sketch there is associated to that work plane. Do I want to delete the dependent sketch and feature? Yes. And the way it goes. All right. So that's the first common way of making a work plane. Another really common work plane creation method is to create a work plane and then pick a flat face and then pick a second flat face. And what that will do is it will intersect a work plane through the middle of those two faces, essentially finding you the center line of your part. So if I was to click there, that work plane is now representing the center line of the part. And again, it's adaptive. So if, I, if this face was to move up, that work plane would follow to always be central between these two faces. And then you can use this plane here is like, say, for example, uh, let's do a mirror of that feature uh, and then the mirror plane would be this work plane here and then that would that's essentially a center line for for a mirror all right so that's one that's another way of doing a work plane uh, other ways are like for example angled work angled work planes are tricky to get your head around and again you've got to think of the the paper or you know the think of the work plane as a card concept so if you want to create an angled work plane what you'd do is you'd say right give me a work plane and i want the work plane to be angled around this edge here so you would click that edge so think of this now right think of having a bit of a4 card in your hands and you're going to put the a4 card onto this edge now that card can spin around the edge it's touching the edge but it can spin around it you've then got to say to inventor right this is the angle i want the card to be but you can't you can't verbally tell inventor where you've got to click things and say right well this is the angle based on a flat face so you say right hinge the card around that edge but click that face and then you can tell you can tell inventor i want the card or the plane to be angled 45 degrees from that face there so it's hinging intersecting the work plane through that edge that we clicked and then it's going to be 45 degrees from that face and you can put in a negative value as well negative 45 degrees click ok and then there's your work plane, angled work plane. And what you can also do as well is you can create work planes to create further work planes. That work plane there could exist purely to make another work plane. So I might now want to create another work plane, hold the left mouse button down on the edge of that work plane and then drag away. And then that first work plane exists to do nothing else other than make this work plane here. And now we've got an angled offset work plane, which again is adaptive. If that one was to move, that one would move. You know, if this face was to change angle, then these would always be 45 degrees from that face. So nothing wrong with doing that at all. Okay, other ways of making work planes. Um, sketches, for example. So if we say, let's create a sketch on this face here. Um, creating a sketch on a flat face doesn't make a work plane. It doesn't need one because you've got a, you've got an entity there to sketch on. So it doesn't need to make a work plane for that. But what we can do is create like, a, I don't know, say an arc like that. Finish that sketch. And you can create a work plane associated to the end point of the arc. So you might want to put a work plane parallel to the end point of the arc so you, to create a sweep, like a pipe or a, a cable or a, a cut, something like that. So you create work plane. You would select the end point of the arc and then if you pick the actual arc itself it'll create a work plane which is always going to be parallel that's sorry not parallel perpendicular to the end point of that arc so if the arc itself was to move like here and then we click update the work plane will always be normal uh, and perpendicular to the end point of that arc and then what you can do is sketch on that work plane press f7 slice the graphics that point there, that's the end point of the arc, so it can project that 
and then we can create a circle, something like this, finish the sketch, and then we can, obviously this has got nothing to do with planes, it's just kind of a, you know, finishing the story type thing. But there's a cut using that word plane, and that cut is now perfectly kind of, you know, it's it's absolutely sound and legit, because the word plane is at the right angle. So that's another way of creating a word plane. There's loads of ways, I mean, I wish I could go through, you know, you can create, click word plane, you can pick, you know, that point, that point, and then sort of, I don't know, that point there, and it'll intersect a word plane between all those three points. Loads of different ways. The best, like I said at the very start, the best thing to do is to use this button here, and then that'll let you click anything. Just click things, and then, ah, right, so if I click that face there, and then and then I was to click that there, ah, so I'll get a word plane there, right, I see what it's doing. So if I was to click that face, and then that point, ah, so it's going to, it's going to intersect a plane through that point, but at the same angle as that face. I see. Do you see what I mean? You, you can then get a bit creative with it. It'll let you click various different things. If it puts a word plane somewhere you don't like, you can just undo, and then there's nothing lost. Okay, so that's a couple of different ways of creating word planes. What I want to do now is just show you some different interactions you can have with your word planes. Now, the first and most, well, not, probably not the most important thing, but um, is the word plane size. Visibly on screen, your work plane is, it's that big, right? That's, it, it gives the illusion of only being able to sketch within that rectangle. Not true. If you were to create a sketch on this plane, for example, you're not restricted to sketching just within it. Work planes are infinite in size, mind blown. <laughs> but they are, there's, there's no edges to them. They, they represent an infinite plane, an infinite face running through space. But visibly within your modeling environment, it has to represent the work plane somehow to show you that it's there. So it gives you this rectangle. Now, the best way to prove this is just there's the work plane. I'm going to zoom out and I can create, you know, you can sketch anything you want. You're sketching on the plane of that work plane, but it can be any size you want. But we're still on the same edge as the work plane. Now, if you want the work, if you find that you're sketching something and your work plane is sort of being dwarfed and it's fading off into nothingness. What you can do is right click on the work plane itself and then select auto resize and it'll resize the work plane to suit whatever sketches are associated to it. So it'll just sort of magnify itself around the larger sketch. And if you do change that sketch, it'll always increase the size of the work plane because the, the work plane's set to auto resize. A uh, couple of other things which are quite important for work planes is the, you, you can't really miss it, but there's two colours on a work plane. You've got an orange side and you've got a blue side or a purple side, depending on, you know, your screen colours and that. Orange is positive, blue is negative. It doesn't really matter until you start doing extrusions and offsets. So, for example, if I was to sketch on this work plane and then extrude this sketch, anything in a positive direction is going to come away from the orange face. So a positive value is coming away from the orange side of the work plane. If I put a negative value in, it's going to go in the opposite direction. Well, it should do. Okay, no, you can't really ex no, you can't extrude in a negative direction, can you? Never mind. But if you were to offset a plane from this work plane, that way, orange way is a positive value. Blue value, uh, the blue face is a negative value. That's that's pretty much it. If you've created work planes and you're finding a mixture of orange and blue faces and it's just killing your OCD, you can interact with the edge of the work plane, right click on it, and then flip normal. We'll flip the blue and the orange side and it'll flip any sketches and features which are already created. So if we were to extrude again, extrude that there, that's extruded in the positive direction. If we were to flip the work plane, It'll then it'll flip the extrusion. So because it's a positive value extrusion, it's always going to come away from the orange side of the face. Uh, right. I hope, that I hope this isn't too long. Right. Turning them off. Interact with the edge of a work plane. Right click and you can untick visibility and that'll turn a work plane off. Once you've used a work plane, you tend it's there's no hard and fast rule, but in most cases you tend not to need to use them again. So you can just turn them off. And you'll see in your browser any work planes which have got a grey icon have been turned off. You can right click on them and you can turn them back on. And there is a shortcut for doing this for all work planes. You can go to the view ribbon bar and then go to object visibility and then turn off either all work features, which is all axes, points and planes, or you can just untick user work planes. And the shortcut key for that is alt and square brackets. And that'll just 
turn them off and turn them back on again. Uh, you can rename work planes if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it because you get that many of them. You can end up with hundreds of work planes in a complex part. So renaming them would just be a waste of time. But if it's something important, you can, you know, you, you can type stuff in there and rename them whatever you want them to be. Uh, you can right click and interact with the work planes in the browser as well. You just get a more structured menu where you can create a new sketch. Uh, you can edit the dimension. The dimension, if you see edit dimension on a work plane, that's because the work plane's been created using like an offset value. If you just if you intersected a work plane between two faces, there is no uh, numeric dimension controlling that work plane, so you won't see that option. But if you do have edit dimension there, that means you've got a value which you can edit. So this is because I offset that work plane by 50 mil, edit dimension, and then you can change that to whatever you want it to be. No visible change really, because I'm zoomed out that far. So that's edit dimension. Uh, so there's a work plane which doesn't have a dimension to edit. This one does. Uh, redefine feature is uh, quite an interesting one. Redefine feature will let you completely redo the work plane from scratch. And I'm going to get rid of these because I'm starting to lose what I'm looking at. Let's get rid of him. Delete. Get rid of this. Delete. Yes. Delete all consumes. Yes. Yeah, so if you delete work, did I cover? I can't remember if I covered that. Yes, you can delete work planes and then it'll get rid of all the consumed sketches and features. Okay, right, so yeah, redefining work planes. So for example, if we were to create a work plane between this face here and then this face here, that'll intersect a work plane through the middle. I'm not sure why it's made it that big, but uh, you can, if, well, it's actually it's a good thing it did. If you want to manually resize a work plane, you can do by hovering over the edges of the grips and you can either move them around if you miss the grip or there you go. You can change the size like that. Uh, but redefining a work plane, right click on it, if you select redefine, uh, and notice as well, I've, I've kind of cocked this up, but this work planes, I've just resized it and it's sort of moved the work plane away from the model, which just sort of blows your mind, and boggles your mind. The work plane is actually still going through the middle of the part. It's just sort of moved away, but you can see there it is still intersecting the middle. So right click then on a work plane. If you've got a redefine feature, you can then click two different faces and then you can completely reposition that work plane and it'll, cry something right, pig's ear of this. Whee! Uh, it'll reposition the work plane based on the new inputs that you select. I'm not sure why it's making it that big. Never mind. All right, I think that's probably about enough. So that's work planes. If you liked the video, if it was useful, slap that like button. Give it a good slapping. Subscribe if you haven't done already. And until next time, cheery bye.